Welcome to Daz Geek. This is very, very exciting for me. I talked about this on Destination Linux podcast out there, which is a fantastic podcast, so go check it out. I am one of three hosts on there. Um, but we were talking about what we were up to this week, last week, and one of the things I mentioned is that I was going to be using Mozilla Internet of Things to start setting up home automation. Now, to my surprise, a lot of people, including those who get to watch the show live, were like, I've never heard of this. So there's not a lot of information out here on this Internet of Things, but essentially the idea is you can create a gateway using your Raspberry Pi and the Mozilla IoT interface in order to control home automation items such as lights, locks, um, switches that you set up, those type of things, which we'll get into here in a second. Then via web interface, I can go in on a computer, on my cell phone or any other device, log in and securely be able to control all of these devices, video cameras, everything else, or turn on certain devices when I want to. Basically all of the perks of home automation without all the privacy invasion and you know recording and everything that you have going on with some of the other popular brands out there that you kind of get in a box and you bring home and you set up and it seems like everything's much easier there. But you're gonna be really shocked to see how simple this setup process is. So this video series is going to be multiple parts. I'm not gonna be able to do it all in this run. This is an introduction to it. I'm gonna to talk to you about the parts that I've purchased so far, and we're gonna talk about things that we're gonna do with this in the future. Let me know what you think. And by the way, I know there are lots of home automation solutions for the Raspberry Pi, uh, being that it's such a low cost device and it is so robust in the things that it can do. Uh, people already who heard about it mentioning other alternatives for the Raspberry Pi, and I will check those out later on. Those may be more complete than this because this is technically still in beta or maybe even more powerful, but I thought this was an interesting project because it's so simple to get started, very, very easy, and uh, I like a lot of things Mozilla does. So here you go. So build your own Web of Things gateway. So when you're done, you're gonna have your Raspberry Pi basically booting to a terminal, acting as a gateway for these devices. Of course, it's going to need a way to communicate with these devices, and you'll have to purchase dongles that allow it to communicate on those various spectrums like Z-Wave, for instance, which is the one I went with. But there are other dongles you can get as well that, for instance, will support things like Zigbee. Um, in fact, there's a whole wiki list of compatible dongle devices if you want Zigbee or Z-Wave here style devices. Now I have the Z-Wave, so I can't control Zigbee devices with the Z-Wave. So I could get both dongles and plug them in and be able to interface with any of these items. But right now I just have the Z-Wave. Also, obviously we can interact with any of these Wi-Fi based devices here as well. So you can look at some of the sensors there that are available and I'll show you the one I got exactly and I'll have a list to all of the products down below in the comments. So you need that Raspberry Pi, you need the dongle. I have the Raspberry Pi 3, it has Wi-Fi built in. So that's very helpful. It doesn't have to be connected to ethernet in order to uh, get on the internet. Here, we also need a flash SD card because we're going to need to download this ISO and install it onto the drive. So this is basically the gateway ISO. It looks like some variation of Raspbian uh, that they've put on here. So that basically it's something that they've taken and kind of modified uh, for this purpose. So once you've done that, you can open Etcher or whatever ISO burner you want and burn that image onto the SD card. As And you're just going to burn it as the zipped file. You're going to burn it right on there. Etcher's going to see it. It's going to burn it onto that drive. You're going to put it into your Raspberry Pi. It's going to boot up. And as long as you have that dongle in there to start communicating with devices, you're going to be able to get started in setting this up. So here is the blog post that I followed. It is linked on this page by Ben Francis. He did such a glorious job here that it would be silly of me to try to reproduce it or show you because it's he literally walks you step by step. This is the device that you need. Here is the micro SD card that you're gonna have. You need to download the software. Here he's using the zip file. He is burning that zip file, not just moving it over. He's burning it onto the flash drive. That's an important uh, differenti differentiator there because you don't wanna just drag the zip file onto the SD card. It's not gonna work. 
you need to burn it on like an operating system. And then once you're done with that, you are going to be able to either plug into a network cable directly into Raspberry Pi and go to gateway.local, uh, or you're gonna see that your device is starting to broadcast itself as Mozilla IoT Gateway. And basically what you'll do is you go on your phone or your laptop under settings where you normally choose your Wi-Fi network and you're gonna select the Mozilla IoT Gateway once you do that, it's going to log on to there and it's gonna give you some setup instructions just like this here. It's gonna give you a welcome screen to set up your Wi-Fi, put in your Wi-Fi password. It's gonna allow you to create a subdomain, enter your email address so you can recover your information, uh, set up your first user account and you can add multiple user accounts. And I'm gonna show you my, uh, my setup here momentarily. Uh, you can add devices, and it will scan for them. You can add them onto the network, then you can set up rules for these and all kinds of things. So let's go in now and take a look at what this actually looks like once you get this set up, because it's super easy. Anybody with, you don't even have to be a computer expert to be able to follow these instructions here. Anybody can get this to work fairly easily. So here we go. Okay, so now this is my setup. After you log in, this is what you're going to see. Now I've cropped out the web address because I don't want people hacking into my home automation system. I'm sure you're capable of it, but I don't want that. Uh, but make sure you have a very secure username, password, that type of stuff to keep people from doing that. Um, but essentially, you're going to get a login screen. And when you're done with that, you will see actually when you first start nothing here, but you can see the devices that I have set up. You would hit the plus sign. It's going to start scanning for new devices once you have some set up like say this bulb here, and you can see it says Z-Wave dimmable LED light bulb, or say a smart switch that you have set up that you can plug things into and control or a motion detector. Once it starts scanning for devices on the network, it will find them. You can rename them at that point. You can see I haven't done much renaming on them because uh, they're kind of the default model numbers there, but you want to rename them so you can you know, figure out what the device names are, et cetera. This one's not going to find any new devices because I haven't cook, hooked any up, but you can also add devices by URL. So this would probably be used for Wi-Fi based devices and that type of thing. So you can see I have my switch here. I have the dimmable light bulb uh, option. I have ambient light sensor, temperature sensor. Those are grayed out right now because instead on the dome device that I have, I'm using the motion detection. Now I'm gonna show you that working right here. I have the dome. I'm gonna wave my hand in front of it right now. It's facing a wall and up above me somewhere right there is a light. That light is hooked into this GE switch here. So it's not a LED light itself, but the lamp is hooked into a switch that you just plug in. Now you could have this, you know, plugged in, you could have anything you want plugged into it to automatically turn on or control it. So now I'm gonna wave my hand in front of this and you can see that light eh, 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 right there has now turned on. I also have created a rule for it after a moment to, to turn off and I'll show you that. So here are your options. You've got an assistant, which is in beta. I'm not quite sure what it does yet. You do have some voice controls here. I need to find a manual or something to tell me what options you can use. I've tried things like turn on switch and things, and it says it's not understood. Keep in mind, this is very much in beta and they are looking for people to help them develop. But I think it's very, very easy to set up and use as is right now. It's fully functional. So I've created two rules right now that I've used. And let's go in to edit the rules so you can see how simple it is. So here are your devices that you set up. And then there are some things like clock and notification that are always there, even if you had no devices on. And what I did is I basically dragged my motion detector up here. And then I dragged my Z-Wave switch up here. And basically, as I dragged them into these spots, add a device's input, add a device's output, it automatically tells you kind of the code that it's going to run if motion detector is motion, detects motion, turns Z-Wave switch on. So if it detects motion, it turns the light on. You can see, by the way, the light has turned off now. And that is because another rule that I have here is if there's no motion anymore, meaning the motion stops, turn it off. So this is a really cool idea. We've actually set this up when I was playing with this in, in the room so that if the kids walked by the stairs, which they're not supposed to be once they've gone to bed, it will flick a light on in our room, bother us intensely, but let us know, hey, somebody's out of bed and they shouldn't be. You could also obviously hook this up to sirens and other things like that to make it way more robust 
of a security system, but that's very cool. You can also do things with clock and other stuff, but those are the only rules that I have set up. You also have a floor plan in here. Now this will be blank for you. I basically took some uh, PNGs off of the internet and then I put them into an SVG format. And what you can do is move your devices around into these areas so that you know where they are set up. What's interesting is since the update, it doesn't allow me to move them anymore. It allows me to control the device directly, but I can't seem to move them onto the screen. I used to be able to, and it could be because of the fact that I used an invalid format of files here. I'm not quite sure on that. But when I did have just a plain, very simplistic SVG file here, I was able to drag these modules into the various areas that they're supposed to be on the map. Like, hey, I have the motion detector down here in my basement. I have the ambient detector up here upstairs and move them around here. So that hopefully is something that they work on and or maybe I just need to check my SVG format and see what's happening there. You also have settings. And in settings, you can change your domain. You can add users here. You can do add-ons. This is a very important function here. The add-ons add additional compatibility to other products out there, such as Broadlink adapters, Chromecast, uh, Eufy, I guess, which uh, HomeKit, HTTP on and off, a simple switch for that. Logitech Harmony devices, Philips Hue, if you want to use the Philips Hue devices, you can connect to them. Sonos is compatible here. WebThing, TP-Link, Wemo, Yeelight, Zigbee, and Z-Wave are default. They are set up immediately. Otherwise, you need to go here and actually choose which ones you want to add. And then you can have those that compatibility added into the device. You have experiments, uh, developer, and updates. So you can update your device as well as new firmware comes out as they make updates to this. The current version 0.6.0 is there. So I have been using this for about a week and I can say that it is very reliable. When I, this motion detector thing here has been extremely reliable throughout the entire week, you know, whether the internet goes down and comes back up it still immediately recognizes the gateway comes back on. It recognizes it. It seems to be very solid and secure from that standpoint, meaning it's not losing these devices randomly or stuff's not suddenly working. So that I've been very impressed with. I think that has to do a lot with the fact that I went with the recommendations on the Mozilla IoT site on the products to use here. So this is the Z-Stick Gen 5. This is what is plugged into my Raspberry Pi, and this is what provides the interface for the Z-Wave platform. So this device is the one that I got because it's the one they recommended, and it works very, very well. This is the switch again, which I'll have linked down below that I've used, and here's the bulb, and then the dome is this little device. Now, the dome is very interesting because I can't, quite recommend it. The documentation on this device is horrible. And the customer support, because I told them, hey, I'm doing this YouTube video. I'm having this issue. Can you guys help? And was practically worthless. They're like, well, you need to go contact Raspberry Pi if you need support with it. I, I explained the whole thing, what I was doing. And it, anyways, so some of the issues that I ran into with this motion detector device is basically there is the way to utilize the ambient light sensor and the temperature sensor. And you notice they're grayed out here because apparently, even though it doesn't really say this, you can either use the motion detector or you can have it detect ambient and temperature, not both. Uh, if it can, then mine's not working that way. Basically, there's a little button inside when you pull off the cover. If you click it three times, it will blink five times at you. That will engage either the ambient light sensor and temperature sem sensor combo, or if you click it three more times, it will engage the motion detector. Basically, if you see ambient light sensor and temperature sensor light up on yours, then you need to click it three more times. And then you'll see something that, by the way, doesn't register as motion detector. It will just say Z-Way, blah, 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 a bunch of numbers. But one of the options as you're adding it is, do you want to do motion detection on here? You'll see something like this. Uh, when you click on it, you can turn on motion detection, etc. And so you'd be able to control it there. This light bulb allows you, if you have it plugged in, and I have played with it, works very well. Once you have it plugged in, you can it's dimmable. You can adjust the luminance, as you can see here, 
within this device uh, of what kind of light, the level of light that you want coming out of it. Uh, so this, this bulb here, this linear link bulb, uh, seems to work very well. There are tons of devices here that you can get for Z-Wave. You can also add the Zigbee um, stick to it as well and be able to interface with those and add this in. So there are so many more things we can do with this. But for right now, my finances are a little tapped. So we're going to keep adding to this little by little and actually implementing the automation through the home, building out floor plans in the next videos and giving you tips and tricks. The first one I'm going to give you here that's very important is when you first log into this device, your username is Pi, just like when you do Raspbian. And your password is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Not Raspberry, Raspberry. This ended up, for whatever reason, even though I've had the Raspberry Pi and I've reloaded it multiple times, ended up tripping me up for way too long. So I wanted to give you that uh, little advice there. I'll have the links for all of this down below. Again, this is my introduction video to all this. Turn on the light, works every time. Very fast too, as soon as you wave in front of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series, home automation. We're gonna hopefully add locks and cameras and all kinds of stuff into this in the future. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and most importantly, until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe.